So good evening everyone. Um, thanks a lot for inviting me to give this talk here. Today I want to talk to you uh, about the amazing world of webcams. So what are webcams? So in my opinion, webcams are really the eyes of the internet. And there are, there are thousands of webcams out there. There are just more than 25,000 webcams just on the Google webcam layer there. So what does those webcams spot? Or what does they look at? So they look at very different places. They, they are indoor, they are outdoors, they look at famous uh, sites uh, on the Matterhorn, at ETH for example, no? they are looking at, they are in the Vatican, they are more or less everywhere. Um, so to warm up and to start, no? what do you think is the most, by far, the most common webcam image worldwide? Uh, you have seen the presentation before. That's cheap, no. no, that's right, eh? it's a completely black screen. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, we are looking around the world, huh? and half of the day it's, it's night, and usually in the night it's dark. So that's true. So the most common webcam image overall is a black screen. So I will show you a, a sequence recorded over several days from one webcam, and that is how that sequence look. So there's an image sampled like every every half an hour or something, no? and it's black, it's cloudy, it's outdoor, and sometimes you spot something, eh? so you recognize it's the Matterhorn here. And what's the goal? What we set up here is, given such a sequence, or given many of those sequences, we want to automatically spot some cool images from the world, like special crowd formations, sunsets, sun races, and so on. So that's the task. And just, by the way, there's an artist uh, here in Zurich, nearby, and he earns his living by manually checking webcams all around the world and spotting some special images. No? And his slogan is like, no, uh, in the right time, at the right spot, take the image and uh, sell it. So from the computation point of view, we are facing mainly two challenges. So first of all, there's an enormous amount of data. Um, as I said, no, several thousand webcams out there producing images, uh, pick the needle from the, from the high stack. And the second challenge is, what is interesting? What do we as humans find interesting in those images? And then select some of those images to keep apart and present for the users. So today I'm mainly focusing on what causes human interest. So which images, which visual stimuli causes human interest? Uh, and only slightly go how, how it's implemented to make it run efficiently. So let's start with it now. What is interesting? So interesting, that's very uh, subjective. It depends on your prior knowledge, it depends on your context, on your personal favor, and on semantics. So like these images, I think that, that's one of the, the holy grails. No? So why this image is funny or interesting? Huh? I think most of you got it, otherwise maybe ask your neighbor. Uh, why not? <laughs> But that's not really obvious. No? I showed this image to my daughter. At that time she was four months no reaction at all. Then I showed this image to my son. At that year he was two years old and he, I think he did a great job. He took his finger and pointed to the man and said, man and bicycle. And I think for a two year old, uh, built, built a system which can recognize a bike from that scene. Uh, so he was very good in categorizing and detecting some instant of an object class, which is very hard. Uh, um, so he cut it, but he didn't spot like the funny part, the interesting ones. No? Um, by the way, we had now uh, my son become uh, three years recently. No? I showed this image to him again. Not much improvement. <laughs> um, later, I showed it to my wife. She, she got it. No? So it is possible to spot why this is interesting, but it involves a lot of, of semantics and scene understanding. No? You have to reason about the 3D world who is driving in, uh, in what direction and what he sees and what he can uh, imagine. So maybe that's, that's too hard uh, to start with and to put on a, on a computer. So we started our work and our research in making the problem simpler. We are focusing on webcams because we thought the webcams or the, the webcam stream itself specifies the context in which we judge if an image is interesting or not. So this brings me to the two parts of this talk. 
So the outline is, the first part is uh, we want to investigate what causes human interests. And once we have this, and I'm invited here in the machine learning meetup, uh, we want to mimic it. We want to use this data as grantors to, to train models and also then uh, use this data to evaluate those models and try to push the border as far as possible till we can uh, mimic the, the human interests. So we began this project almost three years ago and we started by collecting these webcam images and we showed participants like sequences of webcam images similar to this. And we can do this experiment right now. Huh? So we showed them those images and we asked them to press a button if they find the particular image interesting and to release the button if it's not interesting. So if you like, just clap your hands or shout out loud or whatever you know, if you find something interesting in those image sequence. Overall, it consists about uh, 160 images. We displayed it slowly. Hey, don't be shy. Okay, one, one, clap, the, one clap the hand. Um, that's also one issue. Huh? So we asked the participants to, to do it unwatched. So we, we tried to reduce the bias no, of shyness and, and different age groups, male and female, as much as possible. And especially we had two people helping us doing these uh, experiments with humans. We, 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 are, we are technicians, huh? we are not used to do this kind of experiments. So we are working closer together with, um, with people here from the University in Zurich and from EPFL who really set up all these experiments in a proper way. But as you said, now, uh, one or two were clapping their hands, the spider appeared, suddenly. And we showed these images to a lot of participants. So I had the laser pointer somewhere. Or Okay. Oh. So, so we, we get this kind of metrics. Huh? So here are the, the humans. So each sequence are shown to at least 20 humans, different humans. These are the, the frame number of the image sequence. And every bright spot is when a human pressed the button. So you see there was someone, uh, and this obviously was the spider at the very end. And in order to generate some kind of ground to so a human consensus baseline, we just averaged all these human results so in this direction, and we get this kind of ground to score how interesting one particular image is in this image sequence. And I picked some high-ranked images. Now the spider obviously got a score of one, so everyone was pressing the button at, at, at that time. And then there are also some other scores like uh, sunset, sun rays, special cloud formation, but also this uh, like snow or rain on the lens. This causes human, human interest. On the other hand, there are a lot of images where nobody pressed the button. So there's no interest at all in those images. However, on pixel level, they, they look very different. Um, but they are not interesting, also on a semantic level. And especially, I do not know if you have noticed it, at the very end after the spider, the camera was moved essentially, in fact, was zoomed out. But nobody really found this kind of image interesting. So there's a huge change on pixel levels, on the input data, but Semantically, the scene doesn't change much. So this caused, uh, did not cause interest. So we, we are not only doing this for this uh, one sequence. In fact, we, are, we had a data set of um, 20 scenes, so 20 webcam streams, including like public, spa uh, public places, uh, famous sites, a, a store nest, boring highways, uh, strands, and so on. And we did this experiment, or our colleagues did this experiment with all the human. As I said, now female, male, different age group, all so on. Um, and got this kind of, of, of matrices. And just to give you a feeling what's, what's in there in the sequence, so these are some very high-ranked images. So the spider we had already before, some uh, festival or event going on on the marketplace. I think this was at the time where the soccer ram was, uh, also this. There are a few of like medium score, score images, like raising the tower bridge, also very highly semantically, or here uh, an, an egg appearing in, this, in the sequence of the stork nest, or like uh, more sub uh, sub changes. Also like medium ranged or low ranged interesting, but still uh, like personal favor, huh? so special cloud formation, sunset, sun rays, and so on. Um, so how good is our ground truth? How good is our human consensus baseline? And there's a standard measure, um, which is called 
the, the Squambach alpha, and it ranges between zero and one. And, um, oh no, first of all, uh, I give you some statistics of the, of the, um, of the weighting, of the interestingness, of the distribution, how many uh, images are interesting and how many are not. So it ranges from zero, which is non-interesting at all, to one where everyone was pressing the button. And as I said, now the spider is on the, on the way up end and a lot of images are there. And it's a highly unbalanced data set. So like 97% are below one half and only 3% three, uh, three like five images per sequence are in the upper half. So this makes it quite uh, hard to train models and to evaluate them. But now back what I was uh, trying to explain before, the consistency of the data set. How well is the data set? And how good is the data? Now can we build, can we rely on it? And build models. And there's the standard <coughs> measurement called the uh, Kronbach Alpha. It ranges between zero and one. If it's one, then it's a perfect match. So everyone is agreeing with, with each other. And the lower it gets, uh, the, the worse it is. And literature suggested that uh, between like 0.9 and 1, it's excellent, and then it's going down and down and down. And from our data set, like cross-validating uh, all the humans, we got on average a 0.83, which is con considered as acceptable or even good. So this gives ways, even if interestingness is a very, very subjective task, on, on a basic le level, a lot of humans really agree on it. No? Um, if this would not have been uh, if, we, if we would not have uh, uh, achieved such results, uh, we could stop the, the project immediately. Okay, so sum up. Oh, yeah, if you like to play around with this kind of data, you're the machine learning expert, sir. If you like to play around with it, download it. It's free for everyone. No? Feed it in into whatever your favorite machine learning algorithm is, and you can, you can try mimic uh, human interest, at least on these webcam sequences. Um, so to wrap up from the first part here. So this human consensus baseline, which we, uh, which we uh, got by, uh, by, the, by the humans now, uh, gives us a solid ground in order to train models and later on evaluate them or cross-check them. And now we're moving on. Now. So now we, are, we spotted something which is interesting to almost everyone to a, to a lot of uh, humans, and now we want to go to the computer and, and build models uh, with them. And to start with this, we got inspired by a paper uh, appearing somewhere in 2000, 2010, 2011, that's in, uh, where the colleagues from, the, from MIT uh, want to estimate the memorability of an image. So given an image, how well can we remember that image? And they came up and they built a data set, more than, than 2,000 images, I think. Did also a huge experiments and asking humans how, remember, uh, how well they can remember it. Additionally, they were interested in what causes this memorability or what, what cues are relevant to it. So they came up with another paper and with additional annotations of all those, those images. And they had more than, I think, nine, more than 900 attributes. People are labeling those images. Either is this image indoor, outdoor? Is there an object in? Is the object centered? A lot, a lot of these different uh, attributes. Uh, they used Turka to, to do the labeling. And we were very glad and happy they put all this data online. So we just took this data, and in their paper with the memorability, they were looking for correlations with respect to human memorability. Fortunately, there was also one attribute among these 900 attributes which says interesting. So if someone considers that image as interesting. And what we did was just correlating all those features with the interestingness feature. And here we have a plotter. So this says the correlation, the correlation coefficient. These are all these 900 attributes. And uh, we labeled some of those attributes. And you see there's a strong correlation, quite a strong correlation, for assumed memorability, aesthetics, place, and excitingness, um, makes me happy, unusualness, with interestingness. There is also a lot of those kind of attributes which are not correlated at all, or only weakly correlated. And there are also some attributes which are negative correlated. Like a funny side story to this is, no? uh, they did this experiment about memorability, how well an image can be remembered by a human. And they argued that 
um, or the, the shows with this data now, that this is not correlated with aesthetics and not correlated with unusualness. And they also ask the people now, do you assume that you really remember this image? And this was also not correlated with the actual measured memorability. Contradictory, what we found out is, no? assumed memorability is highly correlated. It's one of the top five features no? to interestingness, where actual memorability is negatively correlated. <laughs> so it seems like interestingness and memorability, they are something different, at least in, on, on those data sets here. And to further push it, oh yeah, these are some of this, of this high. Uh, we, we will come among of those uh, later now of highly correlated feature, features now. Aesthetics play a role, unusualness, uh, if an image makes me arousing or exciting. Uh, but we, we really call interestingness is something uh, like a new concept. No? Uh, just to give you one example, no? not every aesthetic, uh, there's a strong correlation between aesthetics and interestingness. But not every aesthetic image must be interesting like this image, highly aesthetic, but not interesting. And, not, and on the other way around, no, not every interesting images must be aesthetic. Like um, the example here with the cars, or just think of like a car accident. A car accident is a very abnormal ev event. No? People are, are looking at it and they found it interesting. But nobody will, will say, that, oh, that car accident is, is like something pleasant or... or um, or aesthetic. Then we also looked up, or our colleagues pointed us to us now from the psychological view. Um, this guy in the like early, early 60s, no, or early, when was it? Uh, mi mid 50s already pointed out four variables which uh, causes interest for human learning in humans. No? And again, this nicely matches to what we found out with these with this attributes novelty uncertainty, conflict, and complexity are four variables he picked up which, causes, uh, which are important for, for human interests. So given what we, had, what we had learned so far, it was right, we went for a very straightforward approach, a very, very simple implementa uh, computation, um, implementation. So given this image sequence, 160 images from the webcam, we want to learn a ranking where images are high ranked, which have high uh, interesting score, and low ranked if they have low interesting score. How we, bit, how we did it, how we did this, this model, uh, relying on those, on those findings before, we built some features or cues uh, which capture emotion, complexity, novelty, and poorly learned. Uh, mapping between the image space and the interesting space. And then we did a simple combination and uh, contextual uh, regularization on top of it. I will briefly go through all of those cues and then very briefly show you how we combine it. I think it was the simplest way we can think of it. And you can do it much, much better if you like. Oh, I think so, but just to show you the principle, no? what's, what's in the data. Um, and then of the rest of the talk, I will just show you some nice and, and funny images, what we, we picked uh, from this huge webcam, webcam set. OK, but first the cues. So one cue was emotion. Oh, wow, it's hard to, given an image, to predict an emotion. But at least people are trying to, to do so. And emotions can be in principle characterized on, on, on a three-dimensional space. Arousal, dominance, and pleasant. And since we want to have exciting images, we do not care about if it's either positive or negative emotion. We just want to have an arousal, either positively or negatively. No? So that's that work. And there's another work which maps, which takes an image and predicts those variables, in particular this arousal. And it's also quite old and simple work. It just takes the image, transforms it in the proper color space, looks at the color distributions, no, and maps those color distributions to an arousal value. In fact, what it's doing, at least this is, at least this is my interpretation, it looks for like dark colors, something like, like this one, and it looks for skin colors. Um, so you map it, so if you have high values there in this mapping, then uh, you also have a high, high ranking for the emotions. 
And from the whole data set, from these 20 webcam sequences I have uh, briefly showed you before, so these are uh, images which, got, which really got high rank. So all this mystery and, and, and night images, but also images like sunset, sun oasis, and, and this, this kind of skin color images. So given that cue, they really fired on those kind of, of images. A second one was complexity. And we came up with, with such a simple features. I, I was surprised that it works at all. So what does it mean, complexity? There must be some structure in the image. And before doing some gar garbo filtering or whatever, no, I just looked at the file size. So in Windows Explorer, I just sorted all the images with respect to the file size. And it turned out it, it, wasn't, it wasn't working perfectly, or by far not, no, but it did something. So it was not rubbish, it was, more than, it was more than chance level. So by just like encoding the image and looking how much structure is there, no? so how well it can be compressed, this gives us some hints how interesting or how com co complex it is. And these are typically high-ranked images here. So you have a lot of structures which can be compressed very much, like a traffic jam, uh, some of those events, but also some kind of camera noise. No? So all these features are far away from being perfect, but it gives us some hints in this direction. Another one uh, what we spotted was novelty. And um, Novelty, we mapped in, there's a lot of algorithms out there, we do some kind of outlier detection. So we mapped a novel image to being an outlier with respect to the whole set. And that's, that's more or less all now. So encoding all your images with, a prop, uh, with any kind of uh, feature and defining a similarity measure among them. We find outliers in this data set. So this data set is one image sequencer. And like, the more the degree of being an outlier, the more interesting or the more it corresponds to, novel, to novelty. These are typical examples. No? So clearly the spider is an outlier with respect to this image sequence, so this gets high scores, all of those kinds of events as well. And lastly, we did like the brute force approach. If we do not know much now how to design features and how to design learning, but we have samples, we have labeled samples, we just take those images extract some features, various kinds of image features, like color histograms, edges, distribution of gradients among them. So very, very simple low-level image, image features. Build them up in a large feature vector, and then apply your favorite machine learning technique. In fact, we use an SVM here, but you can plug it in into uh, this hot topic of deep neural networks nowadays, or whatever, no? and just learn a direct mapping from the image space to the interesting space. And in fact, it picks up also some, some, some special structures. Again, complexity, um, you know, if you just learn it, no? if you just learn a mapping, just a function from one space to another space, it's very hard to interpret them. And so it was with this data set, it does something. So you, you can learn that there must be some underlying structure in there, but it's quite very hard to, uh, to uh, interpret them. Okay, these are our four cues. And one can think of much, much more, no? but like these are our basic features which we have at hand. Um, and now how, how we combine them. Again, we went for the simplest solution which came to our mind. We just concreted all those values, stacked them together in a, a four-dimensional vector, and then just lay, uh, learn a linear, a linear weight, so a, a decision function, uh, straightforward, uh, not, really nothing, nothing special involved, uh, involved there. No? Um, and additionally what we did, we did some kind of context regularization on top of it. Uh, and we used some simple kind of uh, semi-supervised learning with the prior of the original um, scores as here. So we have our image sequence from the start to the end. So I1 to I160 of one sequence. No? We calculate those scores here, no? the, put them in, and then said, oh, but we know, we know more, it's an image sequence. So images are not independently, so the ordering uh, plays a role. So we introduced some pairwise weights in between them and said, okay, neighboring images should, sh it's highly likely that they belong to the same class, or it's also likely that they share their same, or a similar interestingness label. No? It's not like being completely interesting, not interesting, completely interesting, not. It should be have a smooth, uh, distribution among the image sequence. 
And there was another finding. If they are visually similar, so if like the gist or the color distribution, if they have some very common underlying, if they are visually similar, then they also should have a similar interestingness value. So we introduced some additional weights across um, the, the sequence now uh, to build this graph, feed it in into a, a standard semi-supervised, a graph-based semi-supervised uh, problem solver and solve for, this, uh, for the labels. Okay, how we evaluate it uh, qualitatively. Um, we are relying on this top three score, or top n score, uh, which is calculated very, very simple, no? just to compare them. So we have a ranking, the ground truth ranking of the humans, uh, like from most interesting to least interesting. Then we assign this human interesting score to them. And for simplicity, I just have it here like 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on. But uh, in fact, it's really decreasing much, much, fast, uh, much, much faster then. And then having an algorithm, for example, that one which we have proposed so far uh, right now. So the computer gives us, or the algorithm gives us a ranking. We propagate this human consensus baselines to the ranking here. And since we are considering only the top three score, we just discard all the values like higher rank than three, and then sum those guys up and divide it to the maximum uh, possible one. And this gives us this top uh, three score. As easily can be seen, uh, this is between like zero or closely zero and to one. The higher, the better. OK, and now for the comparisons. The data set, remember, 20 sequences of the, of the webcam streams. With the, and we're looking for the, for the ranking here. Uh, if we just make a random ranking, a random ordering, so the chance level would be uh, median 17%. So that's always pox plot. So you have the 25% quantile, the median, and the 75% quantile. If we just look at the, at the individual cues and the, the individual features, yeah, so em emotion does something. Uh, so Clearly, okay, clear, all of them are clearly above chance level, but some of them are better than, than others. Especially this unusualness score, this really makes a big uh, benefit. So why is it? Maybe because we, we, we just understand it the best. Now we can implement it. We have some kind of algorithms to model this unusualness, to, to model novelty very well, and we are not so good in, in, in doing emotions. When we combine all this stuff, with the simple linear model, uh, we get even better. But what really makes a big increase, I would not say a boost, but a, uh, an increase is kind of this contextual regularization. So remember, similar images, uh, sim visual similar images have similar um, interesting score and uh, the fact that it's an image sequence. So, and I find this quite, uh, quite remarkable and surprisingly. With just very, there's no semantics at all. Huh? It's just poorly bottom up. Very simple image features now, mapping to the ground tooth. In the medium case, you can, on the top three score, you are at, at, at 70 or, or more than 70% you can solve. Huh? Uh, with very, very simple cues and a very simple computational model. OK, these were the hard facts, these were the numbers. N now some images from the data set, low ranked images. Um, those are low-ranked images, and they also have low-ranked scores. So in fact, most, uh, most of the webcam images are very boring, and, and there, there's not happening really much. Yeah? So these are correctly uh, low-ranked. Some high-ranked images with our approach, and also like th this uh, two positives. No? High-ranked images, human consider them as interesting. Mostly like unusual events, for example, here the bird in front of the lens, the spider, uh, the truck, and so on. But obviously there are failure cases, and there are a lot of failure cases. Um, those are kind of false positives. And since we have the cues, we can interpret them in some sense. Uh, so here, this, this special shadow, uh, that's clearly an outlier for the, for the computer from the feature point of view. But semantically, it doesn't matter much. So also here's the special cloud formations and so on. Uh, these are typical cases of false positives. Typical cases of misses are small and subtle changes, like raising the tower bridge. Um, again, this going into kind of semantics. No? One has, 
that has a special meaning that those pixels are flipping and, and, and moving. Uh, also here, this, uh, the storks are disappearing from the stork net. This was caused interest because it changes somehow, but it was not, it was not picked up here. Anyhow, to wrap up, no? the computational approach, second, no? while still remaining very far away from any semantic interpretation, no? I think it's possible, it's feasible to mimic human interests by computers, by, uh, by algorithms. And this was just a very, very simple first step in this, this direction. Now back to the webcams. Um, we have it run for almost three years now. Um, we have built uh, a small app, or you can visit us at uh, webcamace.com. Um, or you, if you have an Android phone, just download it on the, on the Google Play Store. You have an interface, you have summaries from webcams all around the world. Um, and you also can this, uh, see these special events, so these interesting uh, events there. So uh, just play around, download it, uh, and, and, and yeah, you, you will see it. Yeah? In the remaining time I have, I will show you some images. What is picked up there? No? So in fact, here uh, I forgot now. The webcam is we're running more than 10,000 webcams all around the world, uh, grabbing an image like every 10 to 15 minutes and analyze analyze them. So what we get? What what is interesting on those image sequences? So we spotted nearly any kind of compression artifact or, or like. Uh, it's horrible. You, you cannot imagine what, what's, what, what is possible if a camera is standing there and, and it breaks. And, and like, in some sense, it, that's artistic and they're fun to look. But yeah. um, we also spotted nearly a lot of this. Oh, I'm broken. Uh, please call the support or something like this. And some people they came up with very funny, funny things. Uh, by the way, for the final application, that's very, both of those cases are, are quite easy to eliminate. No? Here you have a static image all the time, so nothing is changing, so you can throw them away. And also for these uh, broken images, no? so you have a broken JPEG head or whatever, no? so just ignore those images. But only looking at the visual data, this is what pops out. And they're, they're popping out because they are outlier, mainly they are outlier. No? Normally you're watching it uh, like a, uh, a lake or any, any natural scene, and then they pop such, such images. That's a completely different statistics. And so they pop out. But we are also uh, detecting some, some kind of these nice images. So I personally, I like them a lot. Um, OK, it depends. But that, that's personal favor. Huh? Uh, what do you find interesting? What do you like? But this, this raindrops in front of the lens, so, or even this, this eyes, um, uh, I, I enjoy watching it, uh, looking at them. But we're also detecting a lot of faces. Humans not looking in the camera. Um, animals also, uh, got spotted. And animals are also very interesting in cameras. So they are, they are watching us as well and building, like, there are a lot of, of, of these spiders building their net in front of a camera. And there are also some other kind of I would consider interesting images, no? special fa uh, like sunsets, sun rays, no? events. I'm very proud that we have detected this, uh, this double li uh, light here. Funny images, no? double rainbows, various kinds of, uh, of those images. And as I said, now we're running almost three years. Uh, uh, this was one of our very, very first images we got automatically, and last week, uh, we were so surprised, that the camera changed, even the resolution changed, now they built up a new camera, but uh, the spider is still there. <laughs> okay, um, so as I said, now we are very far from being perfect and run this, this whole stuff automatically. But we now have a pipeline that we can uh, like find the needle in the high stick, in the high stick faster. So as I said, now we are running it, now it has more than 10,000 webcams all around the world, picking one image like every quarter of an hour. So this makes roughly about one million images per day, which we have to look at. So if you think having one million images and print them on a sheet of paper, and then build this, uh, like one image on top of the other and build a pile of it, uh, you will end up with 10 meters. So that's like from the very bottom of the Statue of Liberty to the very top. 
so nobody can look at it on, on a day. No? What we are doing, so we run this whole pipeline in a similar manner as I, was, uh, as I described it before, no? um, computationally, completely automatically, and we boil it down to roughly 1,000 images per day. And if you have this, it's like the height of, uh, of a cell phone. So like three orders of magnitude reduced. And in the morning, I or a colleague of mine, we are manually looking across those uh, 1,000 images, which can be done like roughly in five minutes. So you, you go for a coffee, and in the meanwhile, you, you browse those images. And from this 1,000 images, we select roughly one or two per day. So what this means, huh? you have three orders of magnitude, which can be done automatically. And the, then you have another three orders of magnitude, which are done manually. But you cannot do it manually right here. So this computational approach makes it feasible that you can browse it in a uh, proper time to pick out some of those, of those needles, what, what, what was happening there. And this is what we are doing roughly every, every morning when having our, our coffee here. OK, I want to motivate a little bit more why I'm so interested nowadays in this which, what causes human interest, especially uh, visual interest. And if I have five more minutes, then just a small other application uh, to it. Um, and this is, makes a long and boring video short. So here, that's, that's my boy. Huh? And it's like a video takes, I don't know, several minutes. Huh? Uh, I light up a candle, and he tries to blow it out, no? and he tries, and he tries, and he tries. No? So for me, for me, it's interesting. No? It's my son trying it. No? I, have, I have strong emotions. I have, I have memories to it. No? But I think for most of you, those, those videos are quite boring. No? And the, oh, now he got it, finally. Yeah? So what we tried now, hey, what is if we can predict the interestingness, the, like the general interestingness for each of those images in the sequence, and then wrap it up? So make. Uh, video skimming, video summarization. So originally 40 seconds, shortened six seconds. Okay, for me it's not so pleasant anymore, but you got the story. Huh? There's a boy, there's a candle, and finally he, he, he's able to, uh, to blow it out. Um, that's not only possible uh, here, here again. Huh? A video shortened it to six seconds. It's only, it's, it's roughly 90% reduced, but you got the story, huh? You know, there's a crazy guy standing on the hill, sliding down and jumping in. No need to watch like, to watch like one minute, huh? So in six seconds, you got it, huh? Video summarization. If you, if you need more, if you want to see more, no? we also can do it like 50 seconds, just predicting the interestingness cropping a small part of the image. No? And now I get a little bit of more of what's, what's going on. No? But again, you got the story. He's still alive. Huh? Yeah. Hmm? No, that was me last week. Um, OK, and it works for a lot of images. Huh? So they are not perfect. No? But in most of those, of those video segments, you, you, you got the essence. Huh? So you know, you know what's going on. It, it gives you a, a rough overview. OK, finally, to wrap up. In other words, to make a long and boring talk, short and interesting. Eh? Um, I started with what causes human interest. Very general, very subjective. No? We broke it down. We did these human studies. Um, and based on, on this, oh yeah, we did the human studies. And based on this, we extracted or get the feeling of several kinds of features, which we then can use in order to build computational models. And now I showed you like one application or like two applications or several applications where you can think of where this might be uh, useful. So the webcams are one of them, or the video summarization, or uh, a lot of other ones. So. Finally, I want to thank, or especially want to thank four people now. So my colleague and friend Fabian, uh, so we founded this uh, spin-off company together. Then a PhD student working on visual interestingness, Michael, and I really want to thank him because he is good and motivated, which is not so often the case for, for PhD students. So some of them are really good, no? some of them are really motivated, but he's both. And uh, we, are we are really glad uh, 
that uh, he's working on this topic and, and he helps us a lot. And then uh, on the bottom row is uh, our colleagues from the University of Zurich and EPFL uh, who helped us a lot or still helping us a lot of doing this these experiments with the humans, uh, they know how to set it up and how to show it to them. No? Okay, and finally I want to thank you for listening and hopefully you'll find webcams also such amazing as, as I do. Thanks. Yeah. So if you have any questions, just... Uh, yes, sir. Brain injury, so this has nothing to do. <laughs> but, uh, several years ago, I actually did a PhD in medical imaging and computer vision, so I find this very interesting. And I have two, two questions. Uh, it's, the output labels, uh, the uh, interestingness must be very subjective between different uh, viewers, different raters. And how do you deal with that if you include such labels with the inter observer variability, if you include it in your learning algorithm, if it's an issue? And second question. Uh, when you take an algorithm train on these boring webcam data, mm -hmm. where mostly there's nothing happening, if you just try to apply it straight away to something like a GoPro camera or your family video or a tourist video, what happens? Can it actually transfer and generalize or you would have to train for every particle type of application? Okay, so the first part was uh, the sub uh, subjective stuff. No? So in fact, we're not, taking, we're not taking care of the subjective at all. No? So we have this 20, like we have the sequences, no? and labeled each sequence by at least 20 observers, no? and then we just sum them up. So the higher the score, the more people find it interesting. Um, and so we are aiming for this general interestingness. So what, what all people, or like most of the people find interesting. And therefore I think uh, it's, it's feasible that we can achieve at least something with this, with this bottom-up cues, no? like sunsets, sun races. Most people like them. Uh, or outliers and, and that's kind of factors. Uh, all what is semantic, no? so uh, like some people like soccer, no? I don't like, uh, you know, there are various kinds of, of different videos now where someone is very exciting about it and others are not, uh, so we're not taking care about this at all. No? But I agree this is a very, very interesting question no? and uh, it comes up every time. No? Um, I see it as following, no? there's the baseline, which causes general human interest, and then there's some like special pillars on, on top of it. No? And one has to figure out no? to which subgroup you belong to, no? to find the, the proper set. Um, the second question was about transferring the knowledge from one to the other. So here for the, from the webcams, which I showed you here now, so we the, the, the features are fixed. In fact, they are hand designed. No? Uh, and the, the linear model, it's trained only once, and then we apply it on all those webcam sequences, and it, okay, it performs quite well. For the video summarization, as I showed you before, so we let people annotate some videos. And again, the, the, the interesting, so we, we have for the, for the videos, we have some additional cues as well, like landmarks. Uh, such stuff. No? So, but this just increases the feature vector size. No? Then we train it also once, and then it's, then it's the same for all videos. So, in fact, it generalizes well, no? but it's very, the task is very hard. Mm. Say, no? So, the performance yeah. would be lower. Which performance? On the, on the subjective, like tourist family videos. Go sure, through. sure, okay. yeah. But it's also hard, it's very subjective. Now, if you show it to, to humans, uh, they do not agree on all parts. Huh? Mm. So, in some sense, the task, the task is hard, no? because the humans do not agree. On the other hand, you can say, okay, if you are in the range where the humans are, with your computational approach, you are, you are fine. No? You cannot do better. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so the top three score you said is always less than one. The top three scores, the scored by the yeah. users and well, why? Well, is, isn't it ever the case that the computer is something very high? No, no, the, the, the humans are like the, the upper bound, no? Okay. So you, um, as far, you, we have a ranking, uh, and you have the scores up between, and then you, if you have the perfect ranking by an algorithm, which is exactly the same as the human ranking, then you have in the nominator and the denominator exactly the same value, so it's one, no? Otherwise, it's always lower than one. 
and the higher it is, the better. And the other thing was that probably was a little out there, but was there oh, like were there some images which the computer found interesting, and when you were looking at it, uh, you were looking at, at, at it, and they were they had a low result, yeah. a low score, but you thought that they were interesting, and. You know, again, or, or if you showed those images again to a set of users to see if they came up, would they, more users said that it was interesting. No, no, that's the reason why we set up this experiment. No? So you average it no? and you can also cross check. So the humans are consistent to some point no? with these images. And if I found, or if you, no, if like one person finds one particular image more interesting than others, that's uh, like yeah, like your, your, your subject. If, if the same image was shown to again to maybe a little, maybe a different subset of people and they, uh, I'm just saying if there were yeah, yeah. any... No, I, I strongly agree. No? So, uh, uh, currently we are investigating also how is it in between different cultures. Like do we as European find the same images interesting as like the Japanese guys or the US guys, for example. No? Or can we use mechanical Turk? Can we use Turkers? Or do we, because then it's much, much easier to generate training data on a much larger scale. Or do we really have to go to the, to the laboratory and uh, instruct the humans, which is very time, um, time expensive and, and, and expensive from the, uh, from the point of money as well. So there, there are differences. There are surely differences between. Thanks a lot. Thanks.